Now, that recent tier list with Gigak was a bit of a... But we got another tier list of Spring 2024 by Mr. Echidna himself. Let's check it out. Brothers, the Spring 2024 anime season was absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. And so is my taste. So that means it's time for us... All right, self-proclaimed great taste anime enjoyer, huh? We'll see about that. Let's see if his opinions are correct, whatever that means. To rank the good, the bad, the... Level two the... Ch All right, Sensei! starting with Kaiju number eight. Kaiju number eight is an exciting... S tier, S tier. Kaiju eight, S tier. Put it up S tier. Just skip it, come on. Exciting new shonen anime with a lot of intense action and a similar premise to Attack on Titan. Society is at war with these evil monsters called Titan. I mean, Kaiju. Mikasa and Levi are the two captains of an elite. Yeah, and even like the last episode when, you know, Kafka was like within the kaiju and you could see him like stuck in like flesh. Like, you know how Titan people, like if you look at the perspective of a person in Titan mode, it looked identical, right? So yeah, there's a lot of similarities defense force that was created to fight the kaiju. And ever since his childhood, the main character VTuber model when? I'm sorry. I look too good to have a VTuber model. Aaron Yeager has always dreamed of joining the Defense Force. I don't know why I said that. That was a completely narcissistic take. <laughs> that was uncalled for. But he's gay. I mean, sorry, no. <laughs> I meant to say that he can transform into a very powerful kaiju, but he... I mean, Kafka and Reno, they kind of... You know, <laughs> he has to keep that a secret from the defense force because if they find out he's a kaiju, then they would kill him faster than a Boeing whistleblower. There's a nice balance between humor. <laughs> are you guys follow? Now, you guys are probably too young to know what Boeing whistleblower means, but like, are you guys following the fucking Boeing drama? <laughs> TLDR, Boeing's making a lot of faulty airplanes. People from inside are basically snitching, saying this shit's fucked inside. All those people assassinated, died of suicide or stuff like that. But like, come on, come on. We're in seriousness. The action and drama can get very intense, but there's a lot of goofy moments too. Like when the protagonist has to pee, but his kaiju form doesn't have a dick. So the pee comes out of his nipples instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. S tier. Kaiju yes! number eight. Yes. Yes. S tier easy. I think that there's a lot of cliches, but cliche doesn't mean it's bad. Cliches exist because it's a proven formula. You don't have to always customize and innovate. If it's a working wheel, use the working wheel and execute it well. I think Kaiju 8, even though it's very generic as a shonen, there's a lot of similar elements we've seen before, nothing that special. It was still very fun and very hyped to watch S tier easy. Absolutely nails the cliffhanger every single episode, and the overall entertainment value is just crazy. The pacing absolutely insane every episode was so engaging even there was like no excuse of an episode being bad because it was a setup episode the entire course 1 to 12 fantastic if this anime was a penis it would be way bigger than mine tensura anyways tensura ah uh, b or c tier right come on let's not cherry pick just the hype episodes Let's not. Let's think about the whole season. C or B tier. C or B tier for me. Season 3. I love this anime just as much as you do, but let's be honest for a second. This entire season could have just been an email. For six yep. episodes, I couldn't even tell how good the animation was because nobody moved. They just stood there like they statues did. around. And again, part 2 of season 3 is now doing more dynamic, you know, yapping scenes where things are moving a lot, but this is part one we're judging, and it was all pretty static. On the table, talking. The main character isn't even Rimuru anymore. It's the table. It pains <laughs> me not to put this in S tier, but I, know, I just can't right? in good faith it's recommend it that strongly to a broad audience. It's still good enough to be A tier, but... Wow, that's generous. What did I put on my list? I think I put it on the low of... Was it low of good? Was it high good or low grade? Ah, uh, I think like B or C tiers, I think, where it's suitable. This season is not the explosive, nut melting orgasm that Tensura commonly does. And again, there were really hype moments, right? But if we just cherry pick those three episodes and neglect the nine other episodes, what it took to get there, then it's like you're not doing, you're not covering the whole season, right? So 
highs were as high as, you know, the peaks were as peak, but the valleys were so fucking low. The meetings are so boring. B or C tier. Delivered in the past. And that's okay. It's not like the anime is ruined. This type of thing just happens from time to time. Not every part of the story has True. to be constantly. Sometimes, like, the source material you have to work with just... You just, can't, no matter how hard you try, it's hard to make it engaging. So we might be just in one of those writing ruts. The S tier, that's just unrealistic. There's nothing wrong with setup episodes. I mean, sometimes you gotta wipe your ass before you shit so that you- But like, even setup episodes, I feel like, of course setup episodes cannot be as exciting as pop-off episodes, but just because it's a setup, I feel like using a setup episode as an excuse to like, make excuses for a poor anime episode is like, I don't know. I do that a lot too, but I, I'm starting to think that just because it's a setup episode doesn't mean you can hide behind that and use it as an argument to explain why that anime episode was boring. You don't have to wipe it afterwards, you know? A condition called love is a romance and Fuck that anime. People got copyright strikes for it. I'm not watching that shit. Next. Next. Come on. How are you still talking about this? Seventh show at a time! I hope everyone in this anime gets a condition- <laughs> Wow. He put it in D tier. You know what? Makes me actually want to fucking listen to what he said. Because he talked about it a lot, then put it in D tier. What is this anime about? Shin Called Love is a romance anime okay. about... Alright, it's a fantasy anime about this guy who dumps his girlfriend and immediately confesses his love to a random stranger who what? somehow agrees to date him. Until December. What yeah, happens? they had the bright idea to spice up their relationship by giving it an expiration date. Genius, I know. This Conditional love, so it's a contractual, so it's like, alright, you want to go out until December. Interesting twist. This might just be me, but I thought the boyfriend gave off some creepy serial killer vibes. Girls love that shit. I don't know, it's not my opinion. You know that guy from Gossip Girl? Uh, there's a show about him, right? The writer dude, but he's like super stalker and obsessive and like serial killer like, but all the girls think that's like the sexiest thing ever. I don't know why women are like this, but like... They also, like, fantasize, like, serial killers, man. Like, they think they're super hot and mysterious and dark and cool. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Which is weird because the anime's target audience is women. Also, the difference in maturity feels borderline predatory. They're both, like, 15, but the guy is exponentially more mature than any adult in the anime. <laughs> Every isekai is already worse than this. Like, come on. Like, we're watching anime, right? Like... We're not watching like morally high, you know, content of medium here. Almost as if he's lived several lives in the past. Isekai. Isekai. <laughs> Every fucking Isekai character that reincarnates. So he used to be a middle-aged man, gets a new girlfriend, the same age, the, the same kid range. Like, you know, it looks so bad. He's seen the face of death many times before. <laughs> Meanwhile, his girlfriend doesn't even know what a penis is. Anyway, they seem to be really happy together. Like, really happy. Okay. They're like so happy that I kind of hope they break up. In fact, <laughs> I hope they both get punched in the you ever see a couple in public be so happy and you're like, oh, why you show me that shit, bro? My life sucks. I gotta watch you motherfuckers and oh, holding hands and get all kissy. Oh, I hope you break up. I hope he cheats on you or something. Face. I hope the Fire Nation attacks. D tier is where <laughs> based, a condition called based. love belongs. I hope everyone in this anime gets a condition called herpes. Reincarnated Jesus. as the seventh prince. S tier or A tier? I had fun! I put it in S tier! Is a decent B tier reincarnation story that's a bit generic, but pleasantly It is pretty generic. There's nothing unique about it, right? There's no unique plot, right? It's just the OPS kid reincarnated into the future, super strong, fancy animation, great character design, sussy ass main character. That's pretty much it. It was fun though. Surprising. The main character is a young boy who's obsessed with magic, and for some reason, they just randomly thighs, gave him thighs, the thickest thighs, thighs. of 2014. They're <laughs> like, straight up, this kid was more thick than any other, like, waifu in the show. So thick, I'm forgetting what year it is. Why do his legs have higher resolution than his face? This Because the legs are more important. It is what it is. Kid is cheeked up for no reason at all. BBL what is the showed point up. of this? Can someone please explain it? It's to make it viral. Controversy makes people start watching and talking about it. You give a show to a BBL, everyone's gonna be talking about it on Twitter, they're gonna check out the first episode. And then beyond that, some people are gonna actually enjoy it enough to continue. It's just that simple. To me in the comment section. Chillin' in another world with- 
A or S tier, come on. If you actually gave the entire series a chance, this is easy A or S tier, come on. Level two super cheat powers. You know who else had super cheat powers? My ex-girlfriend. And just- <laughs> I hope that's a joke. And it's not real. I'm sorry, Echidnut. I'm sorry. It's like her, this anime sucks a lot of dicks. It's another generic isekai with another overpowered yet- Absolutely. First episode, the most generic bullshit isekai. I give this shit like D tier judging off of first episode. But if you actually gave it a chance and watched the show for what it actually is later on, I think it's A tier minimum. Brain dead protagonist who lacks even a trace of personality. I'm like three episodes in and this guy hasn't had a single thought of his own yet because every five seconds a floating RPG interface pops up and literally tells him what to do. The only reason anyone's watching- Fenris. Danna-sama. That's it. Main character, it doesn't matter. Fenris and then the other girls and the slice of life cunny moments, that's what makes this anime. Not the OP main character doing OP shit, it's not about that. And this is for the waifu who begs to be the main character's slave and follows him around <laughs> being super Pretty clean. much. I won't Pretty lie much. though, she makes two very good arguments. danna -sama. There's just so many similar anime that are much better, so I don't see the point of watching this one. I'm not gonna call this anime oh, mid, on. but if it was a lane in League of Legends, it would mid lane wouldn't be top and it wouldn't be bot c tier spike am i just super biased towards level two cheat like i genuinely had a fun time watching it in the beginning i thought it was absolute trash and then as it started to kind of flesh out more of what the story was i thought it got so fun every week i was anticipating an episode of that because it was that fun i don't know Maybe it's just my trashy taste, man. Maybe it's just my trashy taste in anime. Bison Wolf is about an ordinary merchant who stumbles upon a wolf god named Hollow, who decides to travel with him and help him make business deals and sometimes even- I am disappointed in every one of you for making me drop this show. I didn't drop it. You made me drop it. You didn't watch the videos. No one cared about Spice and Wolf after the first episode of it being viral of, oh, it's finally back. Cap! No one actually gave a fuck. Don't lie to me. Even scam people. She also likes to get randomly naked for no reason, Dance which artists. I thought was a really nice touch. Now, there's a lot of economics in this anime, and I don't give two thirds of a shit about economics, but when Holo the Wise Wolf is speaking, I listen. Holo demands 100%. Yeah, I think, like, um, there's a. Oh, what's, how do you say it? Whenever, like, Frieza shows up, it's a horrible example. It's not like Hollow, but there's some characters, like, fucking D, like, uh, <sighs> There are some characters, when they show up, they just have the presence of the screen where everyone is just like, whoa, the, the atmosphere changed. When Hollow was talking, like, she commanded the screen. I felt that. ...of your attention every time she's on the screen. Calling her a character doesn't even feel right because she is the entire anime. And even if True. she has fleas, that still wouldn't stop me. Overall, this is an S-tier anime and I'm so glad it's finally back. Yeah. It's been so- I mean, I've, I didn't see all of it, right? So I can't really give it a judgment. I thought it was a objectively good anime, I guess. Not really my genre but I can acknowledge that it's a pretty good anime. Long since I last watched it, but I still remember the impact it had on me because it's just unforgettable. Not even Joe Biden could forget this anime. Cap, he forgot that in about three seconds. Girls Band Cry is an- Giga put Girls Band Cry at top of S tier. Girls Band Cry was the highest rated anime for him. What's it gonna be here? An idol anime, and I don't normally watch those, but I heard this one was really good, so I gave it a shot. At okay. first, I was like, oh, CGI. everything is CGI. That's fine, though. If everything is CGI, I'd rather everything be CGI, because it's like, this anime is a CGI anime, so I already know it's gonna just be CGI compared to, like, you know, other shitty isekais where they min-max. Automatic D tier. <laughs> But I was wrong. The CGI is actually an improvement and it looks amazing. Like I said though, I don't watch many idol anime. I just want to make that clear. So okay. the fact that sure. this one kept my interest despite that should be a testament to its quality. The characters have a really amusing dynamic and the music is exceptional. I know really? it's an idol anime, so the music is kind of the whole point, but I've seen hundreds of other idol anime. Better than Bochy the Rock? With really mediocre music. So Such this as? one definitely has- Hold up! You just said you don't watch much idol anime! You, 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 you just said you don't watch any idol anime, then you just said it's better than the thousands of other- uh, Cap! Cap! Better music than the thousands of other idol anime I watched. A I watched! That's clearly a joke, right? Cl he's not slipping. This is a joke. It's called dry humor. A tier. Blue Archive was- A tier, huh? Alright, I've never seen it. 
Blue Archive should be probably B or C, right? It's fine, I guess, but if you haven't played the game, then I wouldn't really recommend watching it. I say that because I haven't played the game. Cap, Cap, no, no, no. He probably played this game. Nah, dude, he probably is sensei, bro. Game, and I thought the anime sucked. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, okay. Maybe this anime isn't as bad as I thought. Yikes. Is this what the girl from Fate Stay Night got her name from? C tier. I'm assuming that this would be S tier if I had all the pre-established attachment. Yeah, of course, if you play the game and you loved it, then it's gonna be high. But like, you know, if you've never seen it, then it's like, what the fuck is this show about? I just checked it out to check out if the Blue Archive community exists on the YouTube reaction side, and it did, so I just kind of delivered. But this definitely wasn't the best anime. It was a fun anime. It's a fun, cunny anime, B or C tier. ...into the characters and the additional context from the game, but as a standalone anime, it's unfortunately kind of, you know, Mid? the lane you play Ari Mid? in. Mushoku Tensei Season 2 is so incredibly good that- Ah, oh, he just created a fucking separate tier list, bro. He just created a new row called God Tier here. You see this shit? Look at the bias there, bro. He just created a separate tier for it. <laughs> I wonder where- I mean, it'd be really based if he created a god tier and then he fucking, you know, just baited us here and put Mushoku Tensei in D tier. That another tier has just appeared out of nowhere. This season has amazing character development, yeah. some phenomenal world building, and of course, one of the most emotional, hard-hitting moments in Paul? the entire series. The first half of this season received a lot of criticism. And rightfully so, I think that Academy Arc was very weak. I enjoyed it. But it's not the Mushoku Tensei that I started watching it for, and I was like, what are we getting out of here, man? This is just a slice of life rom-com now. Though, and I'm not talking about the people on Twitter calling Rubius a PDF file and... <laughs> a PDF file, huh? I've never thought about using the word PDF file for that other word. I mean, I know Rudy's a piece of shit. Again, I know he's an absolute piece of shit. But that's not what I watch the anime for. I watch for everything else around him. And accusing him of writing the N-word. I'm talking about the- He did? Wait a minute, Rudy wrote the N-word? <gasps> G-G-A. I? <gasps> I'm talking about the people who complained that nothing happened this season. Well, just like a lot of a lot, a lot happened this season. And they're probably judging, you know, part one of the Academy arc of fixing his dick. Paul, that didn't age well. The Father's Day episode was so insanely good. It was so good. It had some of the best animation in the entire anime. Some really good fight choreography. Like, if you were to ask me what is the best episode last season, not see, not anime, what was the best single anime episode last season? Shit. Demon Slayer exists. Demon Slayer finale exists. Demon Slayer I... I'm probably gonna get cancelled and called a monkey placing Demon Slayer finale over this episode. They're both really good, but in terms of just pure hype and enjoyment, I enjoyed Demon Slayer episode finale a lot. That was just like my inner child coming out and just like being excited to watch something again. The, the Father's Day episode was fantastic. For sure it was good, but Demon Slayer finale I think is my favorite of the last season. But the, the Father's Day episode, episode whatever it was for Mushoku Tensei, easy top three. Easy top three episodes of all the episodes of anime in spring 2024. Geography and obviously the emotions that followed it. The first time I read that chapter, it made me cry, and then that happened again when I finally got to see it animated. Whether it's from my eyes or my pussy, Mashoku Tensei never fails to make me wet. <laughs> it truly is one of the greatest god tier anime of all time. God tier anime of all time. Man, Mushoku Tensei really does get praised, huh? Like, it isn't like Gigok even calls it like the best isekai ever, right? And like, for sure, Mushoku Tensei is great, but like, the amount of glaze for this show was unreal. I'm not sure if it's my favorite anime. It's, de it's definitely not my favorite anime, but if we're talking objectively, like what it's like the best isekais ever, I, Mushoku Tensei would definitely be a candidate for sure. But like, man, people really, really, really praise this show as much as people really, really, really hate on this show, huh? 
Train to the End of the World is about a group of cute girls driving right. a cute train across post-apocalyptic Japan. But this isn't your average everyday apocalypse. Oh, what's the Rather twist? Rather than the world ending, it's more like reality ended because every town in Japan has a weird, unique problem. Mm. Like all the adults turned into animals or trees or the town itself shrunk in size or the it's just constantly raining golf balls for some reason. It's a weird anime and every time the train stops at a new station, it gets even weirder. I should really try a dose of whatever the author is, had. Is well, there a plot to this or is it just slice of life episodic weird city, weird stop of the week? He was writing this. Anyway, it's not a perfect anime, but giving a group of cute slice of life girls a training arc in a post-apocalyptic setting <laughs> is just arc. such a unique idea and the creativity made it impossible to get bored. The highlight for me is definitely the background music and the background visuals are stunning okay. too. There's also a pretty meticulous attention to detail in this anime, Bald. but I don't think the dog needed they really animated that. To have a fully animated butthole. A tier. Tadaima Okari is a pretty good anime about two men who kiss each other, get married, and raise a kid together. Ha! Gay! This is not the one that Crunchyroll disabled the comment section for, though, right? This is not the one. It's an Omegaverse anime, which is, um, <laughs> Let me explain. So Gigguk was reading some stuff and I remember the term Omega. I remember specifically about the term the Omega and an Alpha. The Omega secretes pheromones and the Alpha cannot resist. <laughs> but these are two bottoms, two Omegas. I'm really about to explain this? Okay. To put it simply, it's a new system in which gay men can get pregnant. I don't exactly know why. Oh really? I don't I know about that. Why a man would want that, because pregnancy is pretty fucking horrifying. I mean, whoever invented this clearly hasn't watched- Would they shit out the kid? Their, through their bup up? House of the Dragon, but anyway, this idea was obviously intended to be used in fat material, but the anime did a decent job introducing the concept in a wholesome way. To be clear, it's- Do girls exist in this show? It's basically like gushing over magical girls where like guys don't exist in that show. In this show, girls don't exist. It's all just yaoi. Husbandos fanboys? It's not horny at all. This is just a wholesome anime. But wholesome, that didn't wholesome. stop me. This anime is surprisingly not bad. So my question- He actually watched it all. Wow. And I bet he didn't even watch it in 2x speed like a certain somebody. Question is, would it be gay if I put this in B tier? I feel like C tier is a bit too I don't low, know, I've never seen it. Especially during Pride Month. Remonster. <laughs> Made it to B tier just because of Pride. Okay. Remonster? This just like B or C tier, right? Like, let's get real. It's not a... It's not... It's, it's, there's some fun moments, but like, was it a good anime? I, I don't think so. The very first scene of this anime is the main character getting brutally stabbed by this insane stalker girl. And that left me with a lot of questions. Who is this girl? Why is she stabbing the main character? Why? None of that shit matters. I would love to know the prologue of this story because it's like this guy already had powers back then. He was like an ESP or something, right? And then it kind of just skips over. Do I love her already? None of that matters though yep. because the main character exactly. gets reincarnated as a goblin and he doesn't question anything. He accepts his fate immediately and within five minutes, he's already eating bugs and killing shit. Mm -hmm. Goblin has to be the worst fantasy race to be reincarnated as though. I mean, they're ugly, green, unintelligent. That's so racist, man, but I mean, it's not a really desirable race to be, you know, reincarnated as like, how many of you are actually going to pick Goblin, right? If you could have a chance, right? Like not, not a lot of people. Level twos and even dwarves are taller than them. But after about episode three, it's not even about goblins anymore. The author introduced a goblin evolution, evolution system, system yeah. that he pretty much only used. I did enjoy that and only uses to make the goblins look fuckable, kind of true. And like, dude, what was the theme of Dami evolving at the end, right? The whole thing was Ogro's wife, main girl Dami felt like she was getting left behind because she couldn't evolve. And then she got the evolution and she turned white. That was it. And I'm like, what kind of story are you trying to tell me right now? Like her form didn't change. Her face is identical. She just changed their skin tone from green to white, and I was like, all right. 
I see how it is. Uses to make the goblins look fuckable. I mean, the main character doesn't even remotely resemble a goblin at this point. They literally just made him look like a demon king. Anyway, <laughs> this anime had potential. B or C? Potential at first, but now I find it insulting that it has re in the title. D tier. Co Based. I can go with that. Konosuba probably got a rest here, right? Konosuba Season 3 feels just like the original Konosuba I fell in love with. That Megamine spinoff was okay, but it didn't really feel like Konosuba. However yeah, because everyone wanted like the main squad, right? Because the main squad wasn't there. A lot of people didn't give a fuck about Mega Man spinoff. It was unfortunate. However, this season so far has been perfectly optimized. There's never a joke that goes too long. The writing is good. And yeah. each character is getting just the right amount of screen time. It My only complaint is Konosuba seasons end in like 11 episodes. Like, why can't you give me two core, bro? Why gotta end quick, bro? Except maybe Aqua, actually. I want Aqua to do a bit more, but maybe that's just me being biased because she's my favorite character. Aqua is your favorite character? She was more useful this season, right? All the buffs that she granted was actually, she was actually a very useful character this season. We make fun of her saying, you know, useless goddess here and there, but like genuinely, all the buffs that she gave Gazma this season worked really well, and she saved Darkness' father at the end, right? Aqua, like, yeah, she put in work this season. That's right, if I was Kazuma, I would use steel on Aqua, and what I would steal is her virginity. She isn't so useless anymore. Kazuma is such a piece of shit though, it never fails to make me laugh. I know some of you think Konosuba's humor is immature and yeah, it is sometimes immature, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's sometimes immature if humor is funny. Repetitive, but this season's not nearly as repetitive as the previous one. You could argue that the humor is immature, and maybe I am too, but I still find that type of humor very funny. Oh no, straight up, just because of immature humor doesn't mean that it's bad humor, right? Sometimes the most simplest shit just makes you laugh. Like you straight up see someone like if you see a bald person, haha. -ha. You see a kid falling over, haha. -ha. You hear fart noises or poop jokes. It's so primitive. It's so immature. But doesn't mean that it's not funny. Also, I just know this ending song is gonna be nostalgic as fuck in a couple years from now. I just love this anime, and I'm so thankful god for tier. another god tier season yeah, of agreed. Konosuba. PPK Good. Euphonium Season 3. Isn't this like a really highly accredited anime? HBK is like so, so good. It's like Kyo Annie's magnum opus kind of deal. This anime is extremely highly rated and I've only heard amazing things about it. Never but guys, it. I'm about to admit something really weird. I haven't seen a single episode of this anime. And the Why the fuck is it up here right now then? Why are you putting it on a tier list then? Reason that's weird is because I fucking played the Euphonium for like okay. 10 years. I don't have one anymore. Oh. That instrument is called a euphonium, I see. The euphonium. Oh. I thought it was like a... It's not a trombone, but I thought it had a different name. But euphonium, he be... Oh, I, I did not know that. Euphonium for like 10 years. Years. I don't have one anymore, so I can't prove it, but I was pretty good. I was first chair for like some wow. of the time, so I really do have no excuse for not watching this. Before I- Bro basically just flexed his euphonium skills and created a separate tier list called haven't seen but probably yes tier just to include HBK. <laughs> There was no point to include that in the tier list, but he's like, yeah, I have to play this shit. Do though, I can already say that this anime is extremely unrealistic because this girl is clearly way too hot to be in the baritone section. Oh, if come she on. was real, I'd be drinking from her spit valve right now. But in reality, women this hot only play woodwind instruments or the piano. My girl pan piano and her godlike thumbnail. Or sometimes French horn. French horn is kind of a wild card. Voice okay. actor radio. Interesting. I didn't know that there was these different stereotypes of what kind of girls are the hottest depending on what instruments you play in the band, but interesting. Yo, is an anime about two classmates who pretend to be normal students, but secretly they're famous voice actors. They accidentally begin hosting a radio show together, which You're leads to them forming a friendship and collaborating with one another in various voiceover related projects. Now that might sound boring, but I kept watching this anime for one reason. Yuri. Yuri. Yuri and one reason only. The Yuri Tag. Come on, now everyone knows that. By episode 3, they're already bathing together, so if my math is correct- Why- why- why would they bathe together? What- what would- How? Who watched this episode? 
Can anyone tell me the reason why they were bathing together? Like, out of nowhere, what is the context? Write it down. Then they should be scissoring by episode 10. Jokes aside, this anime had a pretty interesting subplot about a creepy stalker who tries to dox the main characters, but after that, it kind of goes nowhere and the story falls off. Uh -huh. I think this anime is C tier, Mid. but I'm gonna give it B tier just because the voice acting was so good. So Death can't believe level 2 cheat is being done dirty like this. Surprising, I know. The anime about voice acting has good voice acting. Wow. Who would have thought? Salad bowl of eccentrics. Ah, uh, the episode 1 was funny. It was a very cunny anime, but not enough interest in my channel for the slice of life cunny shit. I hope this makes it to like A tier or above. Is a funny reverse isekai about two girls from a fantasy world who come to Japan and try to adapt to life on Earth. Except they get to keep their magic powers, which kind of gives them a bit of an advantage. But anyway, the first girl is a princess named Sarah who meets a random guy and decides to live in his house after threatening to use magic to give him yeah. a disability. Meanwhile, the other girl, a knight named Livia, I I love Livia in episode one. She's just a homeless girl now. She's just trying her best. Is homeless for the first couple episodes until she finds a job where working at a strip club later. Do they, does she ever meet her Wakasama again? Does she ever meet, you know, Sara? Like, Livia, they, they, she, Livia just does her own thing? She's just working at a strip club? Later, she accidentally joins a religious cult, and after they catch her using magic, they all start worshipping her as their new god. That is very... Wow. The anime ex exceeded my expectations for Livia, man. I'm like, how much more are they gonna go with Livia? Damn, she became a cult leader by the end. From homeless to cult leader is insane. Eh? Let us pray. Honestly, I don't know what salad has to do with anything. Uh, Sarada. I, I think it was just the name play. Right? Sarah, 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 I don't know. This is name play pun. But I had a lot of fun watching this. It's a really absurd, chaotic anime that kind of reminds me of The Devil is a Part-Timer. If you swapped out McDonald's for a strip club. A tier. <laughs> Dungeon Meshi continued airing. Ah, uh, Dungeon Meshi, another anime where I'm so disappointed that we couldn't cover it because you motherfuckers didn't watch it. Into the spring season and continued having amazing world building and art and animation. I love the cooking and I love Marseille even more. If you're a fan of D D, this is an absolute must watch and if you're not a fan of D D, this is an absolute must watch well, i guess he didn't watch windbreaker huh i would put this obviously in god tier but yo how the fuck are you gonna watch that anime where everyone is just an omega verse right just dudes having babies but you didn't watch windbreaker man but right in between mashoku tensei and konosuba the wow. rest of the tier list is it's that high up dungeon meshi is that high up and we didn't get to watch it that's fucked up I am so disappointed in every single one of you for not giving Dungeon Meshi the love it deserved when I reacted to episode 1, man. This is blood's on your hands, man. It's just organized randomly, so the order only matters for the top three. Anyway, thank you for taking the time out of- I think that this is an extremely, extremely reasonable tier list. It's just a little bit unfortunate that some series like, you know... I just feel like everyone's doing level 2 cheat so dirty, man, but everything else kind of makes sense. A lot of people really didn't like Seventh Prince as much as I did, huh? I guess I'm just a monkey that just loves, you know, hype shit happening with fancy animation. Like, yeah, I, I am a monkey at the end of the day. But, like, uh, Tensor, I think, is way too fucking high. This should be B tier, bro. And then, like, I didn't see anything else. And then, yeah, it makes sense. Remaster being down there makes sense. Yeah, this is reasonable. I, I like, I... Giga fucking... <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that, but... Yeah, it's a good tier list of your day to watch my video if you enjoyed it youtube has a button you can press to be yep. notified guys go give mr a kid nuts like on his video sub to his channel if you haven't that was a pretty good tier list i'm glad that i reacted to this i love these tier lists i love watching other other people's tier lists and their reasoning and line of thinking of why it made it to that place but that's it for me see you next time